do you want to easily solo some dungeons? Of course you do, and you should use this build to do so. If you've seen some of my videos already, you'll have probably seen me using a solo warlock with a similar build to this for solo flawless activities. After receiving a few comments asking me to make a guide alongside several comments that made me laugh, I thought I'd give it a shot to see if I can help you get your solo dungeons done and grab those cool emblems. So let's get straight into it. The first thing we're going to talk about is restoration. The most simple way to get your restoration going is to simply throw a grenade at the floor and with this build you'll immediately get restoration times two. Keep an eye on the buffs on the left hand side of my screen. You'll see me keeping this buff going by killing enemies with solo weapons or solo abilities. And as you can see from my gameplay, they have got restoration times two for a maximum of 15 seconds most of the time. And I am taking hit after hit from all these adds and nothing bad is happening. For my abilities, I'm using Phoenix Dive, Healing Grenade and Incinerator Snap. You'll want to be quick to keep your restoration up, so it's a good idea to throw the grenade down in front of a group of ads and use your incinerator snap to quickly get a good amount of time to find your bearings in the encounter. The next thing I want to talk about is the fragments I'm using. In this build, we've got Touch of Flame and Heat Rises. Touch of Flame is going to give our healing grenade restoration times two without having to consume our grenade, jump up and phoenix style. This allows us to instantly get the restoration ticking rather than having to use a little combination first. If we do choose to, to consume our grenade and get heat rises, we will be granted restoration times one for a brief time and also we will gain heat rises for 15 seconds. When we have heat rises active, getting kills whilst airborne is going to extend the duration of heat rises whilst also giving us melee energy on those solar kills. For the aspects I use Ember of Empyrean so that our solar weapon or ability kills will extend the duration of a restoration and radiant as you've seen at the start of the video. It's worth noting that stronger enemies will extend the duration greater than the red bars do. I'm also using Ember of Ashes so that we are going to apply 50% more Scorch stacks per target. Scorch is what is going to be making everything in this build work so well together. Scorch is an effect that is going to cause enemies to take damage over time and after you apply 100 Scorch stacks it will cause the enemy to ignite causing a high amount of damage. Our next aspect is Ember of Searing, so when we kill Scorched targets we're going to be granted even more melee energy so that we can keep clicking our fingers and killing everything, extending our restoration and radiant and also this will mean that Scorched targets that we will defeat will also create a fire sprite which will give us 12.5% grenade energy. Our last aspect is Ember of Singeing. This is going to give us a huge 300% additional base class ability regeneration for 3 seconds after we apply Scorch to a target and we're going to be applying Scorch a lot with the following weapons. Our weapons work perfectly with this build. We want something with Incandescent to spread even more Scorch stacks, so either a Zowley's Bane or a Callus Mini Tool Callus Mini Tool also is able to get Unrelenting, which is a great perk for even more health regeneration as we are killing adds. In our primary slot, we want to use either Riptide with Auto Loading and Choke Clip, or Scatter Signal with Slice and Controlled Burst. If you don't already know, Slice causes the weapon to apply the Sever debuff on hits, which decreases the enemy's outgoing damage. In the Heavy slot, we're going to be using the Exotic Dragon's Breath. This weapon periodically applies Scorch to targets causing huge exploding tick damage and will automatically reload quickly with the catalyst unlocked, meaning you can shoot a rocket, switch weapons or pop super and deal a lot of damage. In Season 23, the artifact mods work almost too good with solar, and here is what I'm using. First up, we've got Kindling Trigger. This is going to cause our solar weapon damage to apply 30 scorch stacks to enemies that aren't already scorched but with our ember of ashes aspect applying 50 percent more scorch stacks this is now going to be 45 stacks next up we've got flint striker this mod grants radiant for 10 seconds after getting multiple precision hits within three seconds of each shot 
or after scoring three kills within one second of each other with solo weapons. You'll see me do this on bosses sometimes to regain Radiant if I have lost a buff and you'll need around 25% of the magazine of a solo weapon to precision hit to proc this. Next is Torch, which is going to synergize with Riptide or Scatter Signal to give me 5% increased weapon damage against enemies that are affected by Strand or Stasis debuffs while I'm Radiant. Heart of the Flame will grant increased super damage when you're playing solo. The damage buff you're going to be receiving is a 6% bonus on your Daybreak projectiles. Revitalizing Blast when you deal solar ability damage to bosses, it will weaken them for 6 seconds, so we'll be using our super or our incinerator snap to proc this. Weaken will cause the boss to take 15% more damage, and as this is a debuff, this also stacks with Radiant. Rays of Precision makes our solar precision kills on enemies whilst we're raiding cause an ignition. Of course for solar gameplay, we're going to be using solo operative. This increases weapon and ability damage against PvE combatants by 15% while you're the only member of your fire team. And lastly, from whence you game, it's perfect for Taken and Scorn combatants, as it gives 5% ability damage to Scorn and Taken, so it's great for Prophecy, Shattered Throne and Warlord's Ruin. The last two pieces of the puzzle are our exotic helmet, Dawn Chorus, and our super Daybreak. Dawn Chorus's intrinsic perk, Rites of Ember, causes our Daybreak projectiles to deal 90% increased damage and as we're using Ember of Ashes they will also apply 40 Scorch on hit. Not only that, but Rites of Ember causes our Scorch from all sources to deal 200% increased damage and each Scorch damage tick will grant 5% melee ability energy. As you can see from the damage numbers, we've got multiple sources of damage happening all of the time. We've got our Dragon's Breath, our Daybreak, and our Ignitions going off. This is just one damage phase on the Ogre boss in Grasp of Avarice, and from not even a perfect damage phase, I've done over half the boss's health absolutely effortlessly. No armor swaps or weapon swaps, just a few perks to keep an eye on. For the armor mods, I run the following on screen now. On my helmet, I have Harmonic Siphon, Font of Wisdom, and Heavy Ammo Finder. On the gloves, I use Focus and Strike, Impact Induction, and Harmonic Loader. Onto the chest piece, I use Concussive Dampener, Harmonic Resistance, and Void Resistance, but this can be changed for whatever the instance is at the time. On my boots, I run Harmonic Scavenger, and then two times Solar Weapon Surges. On my class item, I'm going to be using Bomber, Powerful Attraction, and Time Dilation. The stats don't matter too much on this build as long as you've got 100 resilience, but I do try and keep my discipline quite high so I can get those grenades up all the time. Thanks for watching this guide, and I really hope it helps you get your solo flawless completions. I'd really appreciate if you could give me a like, a subscribe, and let me know in the comments any thoughts about my first guide video, and definitely let me know if this helped you and you got your solo flawlesses complete. I'll catch you next time.